When I was a kid, my dad told me the story of when he went to see the original Star Wars movie, uh, movies in the theater. He told me how the crowd roared when the words Star Wars appeared on screen. And when I watched the movies for the first time with him, it was like nothing I had ever experienced before. It's truly a once in a lifetime experience for someone to see one of the greatest movies of all time on opening night. Someday I'm gonna tell my kids the story of seeing Avengers Endgame a day early in theaters and how the crowd that night was like nothing I would ever experience again. It goes without saying that Star Wars is one of the most popular movies ever created. Have you ever been working on a piece of art like a drawing and it's going really well and you try adding more stuff to make it better then all of a sudden you realize you made it worse, but you can't erase it. This describes my feelings about Star Wars. The most impressive thing about Star Wars is that it's not based on any pre-existing art. Think about some of the best movies of all time. Lord of the Rings, based on books. Titanic, based on historical events. Endgame, based on comics. My favorite movie of 2022, where the crawdads sing, I learned was also based on a book as I watched the credits roll in the theaters. The Star Wars movies were created for the sake of creating movies, and that's what made them so special. A New Hope, The Empire Strikes Back, and The Return of the Jedi were all top-notch cinema. And despite growing up a solid 30 years after the release of A New Hope, Star Wars remained a staple of American culture. If you didn't grow up swinging a plastic lightsaber at your little brother, your parents didn't love you. And then I think it was for my 14th birthday, my family and I went to see The Force Awakens in theaters. We all enjoyed ourselves, but now that I'm a little older, I noticed that it shared some similarities with A New Hope. It's practically a shot-for-shot -shot remake. It could just be me, but I also found the OGs like Harrison Ford and Mark Hamill to be putting on less impressive performances of their characters than they had done in the original movies. Just like how they're butchering childhood icons and trash shows today like disgracing Scooby-Doo by producing Velma and disrespecting Tolkien by crapping out Rings of Power, they decide to make an embarrassment of Luke Skywalker. After Anakin Skywalker turned to the dark side and everyone thought all hope was gone, Luke Skywalker came to the scene and turned out to be an even more powerful Jedi. The Force was with Luke like no one ever before. Then, they made Luke a depressed milk addict who was a hindrance to the plot progression and was unbearably unlikable. Imagine if Peter Jackson had gotten high and said, how about in The Return of the King, we make Gandalf a fat alcoholic who cusses at Pippin all the time. They were going for a, an arc like the one Thor had in Endgame, but did this so much worse than the MCU. Thor became fat because of the depression he fell into after losing everything and failing to save the universe. It's already easier to empathize with Thor because we saw the exact trauma he's feeling over the course of a handful of movies, but we had to learn about Luke's struggles through a couple flashbacks. Then despite his struggles, Thor fearlessly fights against Thanos in Endgame. The lesson in his arc was that he was still worthy to wield Mjolnir. Just because you've lost the fight doesn't make you unworthy. And Chris Hemsworth's portrayal of Thor in Infinity War and Endgame were better than his performances in any of the solo movies. I'll never forget the cheer in the theater when the lightning cracked and Thor summoned Mjolnir and Stormbreaker to his side. However, I heard no such cheer for Luke Skywalker in the theater. At the end of the movie, he projects himself across space to fight Kylo Ren and then dies. I wish they had like slipped in a nugget earlier in the film suggesting that it would be the greatest feat of one's oneness with the Force to use it over such a tremendous distance and to such a significant effect. Not so. In the original scripts of The Office, Jim is written to cheat on Pam in later seasons, but John Krasinski, salute the man, literally refused. Thank God he did. That stupid idea would have ruined the show and the most compelling love story in television history. Why didn't Mark Hamill do the same with this movie? Probably because they were going to make a buttload of money regardless of what they did. A childhood hero died with The Last Jedi and I blame you, 
Yay, yay, Abrams. Then the last of the new movies was Rise of Skywalker, and it made less sense than the first two. What on earth was this scene about? There was nothing about these two characters that felt like a love story. Just because you got a boy and a girl and they're the main characters doesn't mean they're destined for love. You've actually got to spend time making these characters fall in love with each other. This was just so grossly forced. I wouldn't let my palate experience Star Wars again until The Mandolin came out. I heard good things and I guess Baby Yoda looked cute. I think I received a Snapchat somewhere in the second episode and completely lost interest in the show. <laughs> But I watched the Bill Burr one because he's Bill Burr. I'd have to say my favorite movie outside of the original three is Rogue One. It was a movie that took a direction I've never seen before. Every single new character that was introduced in the film was killed off by the time the credits rolled. This forced the creators to create entirely new characters and with the span of two hours or so make them compelling enough to leave a hole in the audience's heart. It was a relief to watch a movie with such an unexpected plot. Typically, a movie's suspense is ruined by the fact that you know full well the creators won't kill off a certain character. But then you watch Rogue One and literally everyone dies. What lies at the heart of my impartiality nowadays to Star Wars is how watered down it's become. Companies continue to produce half-baked content because they know it'll make them money. In my perfect world, pieces of art would end when it was time, and the great artists we call movie directors would write original stories and try to move the hearts of millions genuinely, like George Lucas did many years ago. Hollywood is just like any company at the end of the day, they're out there to make money, and they'll continue to produce lame reboot after cheap knockoff until it stops turning a profit. So for the sake of Luke Skywalker, and one of the greatest movies of all time, stop spending your hard-earned bread on this trash, let a beautiful flower blow in the wind, and let Star Wars live and die as the great piece of art that it is.